What I'd like to talk about today is the first of the five constructs of programming, specifically the ifs and else statements. The if and else statements specifically talk about branching or decision making, and in most languages, um, like Pascal, C++, C, and Java, and Basic, they're, they're all this, the syntax is generally all the same. The if statement is going to be generally the most commonly used uh, branching statement, the other one being a switch, which isn't used nearly as often. So let's get into it right away here. Now, the way that we use an if statement is basically uh, we say the word if. Okay, now not uppercase, but lowercase like this. And then what we do is we provide some sort of logical condition here. And what the computer will do is it will evaluate whether this condition is true, and then what it will do is execute a section of code inside the body of the of the structure here. Okay, so if this is true, then whatever code is inside here will get executed. If it's not true, um, then it won't get executed. And that's essentially it. All right now. Um, it's a little more gets a little more complicated than this because if can be paired with an else statement and an else statement is essentially the opposite of the if statement as far as a condition goes so what I have is a logical condition and I have something that says like if something is true then do this and this part means if it is not true then do this all right now, this forms the foundation for all decision making and computing, and these logical structures can get really, really complicated. So I'm going to keep it kind of simple right now, and then later on when I talk about uh, the fu fundamental algorithms, uh, then what we're, uh, we'll get into some specific cases of how you might use this uh, to solve certain types of problems. Okay, but for now, um, just keep in mind that I'm just trying to just show people how to use this or show you how to use this in general uh, and I'm assuming that you've never seen the if statements before. Okay, so let's say for instance I have a program and I just have a variable, so some number, and I'm going to set the number to be equal to 6 just to start. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say an if statement here. I'm going to get rid of the else for now. I should say that it's important to know that an else must be paired with an if, and an else can never stand alone on, um, like so it can't be just by itself in the code. It kind of doesn't make sense. Um, the example I give is, I often give, is to say like, uh, if your parents tell you to clean your room, they might say clean your room or else. So what the implied condition is that if you clean your room, everything will be okay, or else it won't be okay. It wouldn't make sense if you just went up to someone, for instance, and just said else, you know, or or else. Um, the person would probably look at you confused because they're looking for a condition to precede it. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the else statement now. We'll talk a little bit more about it later. Now, what I'm going to do is add in a condition here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the number is equal to six. Okay, now, in previous videos, I talked about the difference between equals equals and a single equal sign. And a common mistake in programming is that people will code like this and say if number equals six with a single equal sign, that's always going to give you an error. It's, well, it's not going to give you a syntax error. We'll give you a, what's called a logic error, uh, where the computer is doing what you told it to do. You just told it to do the wrong thing. Um, what this does, if you use a single equal sign, is it will set the number to be equal to 6. So even if the number was equal to 3 to begin with, right here the number will become 6, and then the computer will assume that it's true, and then it'll execute this body. Okay, so go back to set this to 6, and I'm going to say if it equals, equals 6, right? Now, I really can't stress enough what I was just, just talking about. A single equal sign is for assignment. Okay, it's for assigning variables. Okay, double equal sign is for comparing values. Okay, so single is assigning, double comparing. Okay, so I'm going to say if the number is equal to 6, and then I'm going to provide some code here. Now, if you only have one line of code that you want to execute, then you don't need these scope brackets here. 
Okay, so I'm just going to put one simple line there, and that will make it so I don't need these. Okay, so I'm just going to say C out, the number is 6. Okay, and I'll throw a N line character there so draw, just to make it a little bit neater. Okay, and I didn't compile it. Okay, and it says, oh, yes, I didn't compile here. Compile. Okay, and here it says the number is 6. Okay, now let's say, for instance, I don't do that and I say something like this. I say number 7. Now I'm going to ask if the number is 6 and we'll see what happens. So compile and it says nothing. Okay. Okay, so what that shows then is that it doesn't really matter uh, what the like what the number was. The computer will evaluate it either way. Okay, so it's going to say if the number was six, then I'm going to do this. If not, then nothing. Okay, now I'm going to pile. I'm going to pair this with an else statement. Okay, uh, I'm just going to say C out. The number was not, or we'll say is not. 6. Okay, now a lot of times people will put a condition here too, so they might say else number uh, not equal to 6. Okay, now this is going to give you an error, Okay, so if I compile it, okay, I get an error. And the reason why is because the else statement doesn't require a condition. The reason why it doesn't com require a condition is because it's already the opposite of the if statement. So it's already not, if this one is equal to 6, this is already not equal to 6. Okay, so it's not required. Okay, so don't put that there. Okay, so let's see what happens here. When I run this, okay, it says the number is not 6. Okay, and that's really it for the if statements. Things are, are pretty simple. Uh, I'll show you a few other examples where you can pair up different logical conditions. Um, let's see, so let's say I change this to be number one, and this is number one. Okay, so, and I make two variables. Number two is equal to five. All right, so what I can do is I could say, if number one is equal to six, and, number 2 is less than 10 and I'm just going to put something else more generic here I'll say hello world okay, and if it's not then I'll say goodbye world sounds kind of depressing but it'll still work as an example okay so I have number one is seven and number two is five and here I'm going to check to see if number six is uh, number one is equal to six and number two is less than ten and since number two is not equal to or number one is not equal to six then it's going to say goodbye world okay so it says goodbye world now one of the things to remember is when you pair logical conditions with and it means that both of these values have to be true Okay, so this has to be true, and this has to be true as well. If I was going to compare it with a logical OR, in that case, only one would have to be true. And since number two is equal to five, which is less than ten, this one is going to be true, which makes uh, which will make this line execute. Okay, in this case, I got hello world. Okay. Now, another common mistake that people make, I'm just going to re-simplify this here, okay. is, I have to get rid of this number two here, okay, is that they'll put a semicolon at the end of the if statement. Now, what a semicolon does in programming is it ends a line. Now, you can't end an if statement like this, or you shouldn't, because what happens is this body, it detaches this body from the condition. Okay, so it says that the if statement is over right here. So what will happen is that even though it looks like it's written correctly, this line will always execute. 
right? And in this case, you're going to get an error, okay? Because this it also detaches the else statement from the if statement, and the computer will say, "Hey, there's no if with this else," and I'll show you that right here. Okay, so right away you can see it gave me an error, and the error is uh, expected semicolon before s. Uh, well, it says expected primary expression before else. Okay, it means that this is the secondary expression, and it's expecting the primary one, but it didn't see it because I detached it using the semicolon. So no semicolons after the if statements. Okay. All right. Now let's say, for instance, I wanted to do a couple different things, or I wanted to do three different things, depending on what the number was. So let's say um, I wanted to say if the number is equal to zero, okay, then C out the number is zero. All right. And what if I wanted to say, well, I want it to be negative or positive. So I want the computer to tell if it's negative or positive. Okay, well what I would do then is I could also say, use another if statement, so I could say if the number 1 is greater than 0, see out the number is positive. Okay, and I could do the same thing. Okay, and make it for uh, less than zero, and make it so that the number is negative. Okay, so I'm basically using three if statements. Each one is detached from the other. Okay, so it says the number is positive. Okay, if I change it to zero, okay, it says the number is zero, and if I change this to, let's say, negative 9. Okay, it says the number is negative. So this, uh, this program works as I want it to work. Okay, now one of the problems, though, it's not really a problem, it's a consideration, is um, this structure, so this if, if, if structure. Now, if, if, if um, is a structure where the computer will check every single one of them. Okay, so let's say, for instance, the number is 0. It's going to go into the if statement, and it's going to find that this is tr this is a true statement. Now, it doesn't know that these ones should be excluded. So what will happen is that it's going to say, "Okay, this is true," and now I have to check this as well, and now I also have to check this, okay? Uh, because it doesn't know that these are all mutually exclusive conditions. Okay. Another way of setting this up is using something called else ifs. Okay, and in this case, it might be better to set this up like this. Okay, now when we use else ifs, what we are doing is combining an if this if statement with the else statement from the previous if statement. Sounds kind of confusing, I know. Right, so we have if and else, they are a pair. Okay, and then what I do is I combine this if with this else, else together. Okay, and now what this does is it says, okay, if the number is equal to zero, now then do this. Now if it's not equal to only if it's not equal to zero then do this, okay? So when we had if, 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 well, the computer will always check all the different conditions regardless of whether or not it finds a true one. And sometimes, uh, for instance, you, wanna, you want it to stop as soon as it finds a true one. In other conditions, even if it finds a true one, you want to check all the other conditions as well. Um, and that, that's a different case when you want to check them all. Okay, now with this one, what will happen is that you will say, it will say, if this is true, then do this. If it's not true, then do this. And then, and finally, if neither of these are true, then do this. Okay, now the difference is that as soon as it finds a true one, it's going to stop. Okay, so in this case, it's going to check this, find out it's true, and it'll print this line and stop. Okay, so it's going to save me a few operations here. Okay, I'll, re I'll rewrite the other one just to demonstrate how they are different. Okay, so in this one I had else if, if, if. Okay, now in this particular program, um, these two are going to seem exactly the same. 
right? But what you'll find is that they are actually different. This one here, this set here will find the first condition and stop as soon as it finds the first correct condition. This set here will find a condition that matches and then continue checking all the other ones as well. Like I said, there's no right way or wrong way to do this. Uh, it just depends on the situation. So sometimes, like I said, if you want to just check until you find the first true condition, then you should use an if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else uh, setup. If you want to keep checking and you want to see all the different things that might be true, then you have to use if, if, if. Right? And that's really it for the if statement. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, please drop a comment in the comment box or send me an email. If you do like the video, then give me a thumbs up. And if you do enjoy this series, then please consider subscribing to my channel.